If you guys have a blower card like me, you are always lusting after a fan card. But if you buy them secondhand like I do, you get such a good deal on the blower card that you stop caring a lot of the time. So that's exactly what I did. I recently picked up an MSI Aero 1080 Ti on Facebook Marketplace of all places, locally here for $460. The main reason I did that was I was shopping 2080 Ti, mainly because it's the best of the best, but I really don't need that performance. 2080s don't quite do it for me. The 2080 is roughly on par with the 1080 Ti in performance, better in some areas, worse in others. But I digress. The cooling on the blower cards is adequate if you keep the fans on max, but they're of course very, very loud. So I started looking into liquid cooling options, but I don't really want to go open loop on my main 360 millimeter Cooler Master AIO on my processor. So my option was basically buying another GPU cooler aftermarket, either passive or not passive necessarily, but fan cooling or water cooling. Uh, and then I came across this Kraken G12, which fascinated me. I saw this standard Asetek mount here, which is clearly what it is. Asetek is the OEM for all of the major manufacturers of AIO coolers. And I'm like, that's a really cool piece. It looks fabulous in the case, which is nice because I've got a Corsair 570X tempered glass case. It's white, uh, it's available in white and black. I've got a white case, um, so I went with the white card. Now, of course, I'm probably gonna have to buy some uh, cable sleeves that match. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. But I saw this and I figured, you know, coming with a fan, nice piece of metal like this, obviously it's not very complicated, but the tooling required to stamp this out isn't insignificant. So I figured something like this would cost 50 or $60. No, it's actually 30 bucks shipped to my door. Um, so that's, hey, I'll take it. You can see a version of the black one right there. Uh, so that's basically what I'm gonna do. Uh, and how I'm going to show you guys uh, this setup is a standard 120 mil Asetek AIO, not a rebranded one. Uh, it's a brand new cooler I picked up, uh, new old stock, from an Asetek reseller for $32 shipped. So all in, this thermal solution should cost me $62, and then I will have a liquid cooled 1080 Ti. Because right now my GPU temps if I just let it go for a 3D Mark benchmark or something like that, it goes to 85C. That's just way, way, way too high. It'll stay in the mid to low 70s if I leave the uh, blower fan cranked, but again, the noise level of that is ridiculous. So I'm looking forward to this piece. Just a quick summary of what's in the box and how it looks. Two very large bags of hardware, one of course including the plates, which are required to mount the uh, uh, AIO plate here uh, to the actual PCB of the card. Then you've got the stamped steel, Sure feels like steel. Uh, construction, um, I don't even know what they call this thing. I guess it's just a mounting plate. <laughs> and then we've got this 92 millimeter fan, which, I mean, it's got a black cable on it, which is nice. Um, some of these really kind of, I'm gonna call it a cheap fan because it's a sleeve bearing. Uh, no RGB or anything, but what do you expect? It's a 92 mil, so it's a little harder to find something like that that's actually inspiring. And again, this has a price tag of $30 delivered. So I'm not expecting anything really too much there, but it comes with you know, nice hardware, the, uh, a manual, which has some color print on it, I guess, if you look at that kind of stuff. I may read through it just for fun. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I can't, I'm very impressed with the price point, especially if this actually performs as well as it seems like it does for, uh, for most folks. So right now, this is what she looks like. Nothing too impressive. That blower card is kind of meh. So I just started a really basic combustor stress test. We're sitting at 97 degrees, or sorry, 97% utilization. And we are climbing quickly. I'm gonna let this stabilize and we'll see what it ends up being at here. So in just that short little test, we already got up to 81 degrees. So that's just, that's not gonna do it for me. And uh, in your idle temp right now, not too bad, but if I go and I crank the fan, That's disgusting, so that brings the temps down quite a bit, but <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to have a nice quiet computer if that graphics card is just going to ruin it. And it's actually been artifacting a little bit because it is overclocked just a little bit uh, once it gets up to like 85C, so 
I'm going to shut this thing down, rip the card out of it, start taking the card apart, and uh, we'll see if we can get that liquid cooler on there. So here we have the MSI Aero 1080 Ti. It's that bad boy right there. And no, we're not water cooling this 6850 from a billion years ago. The infamous blower card. I believe all of the 1080, 1080 Ti, and 1070 reference cards were blowers back in this era. But if you look now, the blower cards aren't worth nearly as much as the fan cards because they just don't cool as well, it seems like. So I'm going to lose my little light up MSI thing there. Big deal. <laughs> also going to lose this cooler. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I have to even pull the perimeter screws because I believe those are just to hold the plastic shroud on top of the heatsink. But we do for sure have to pull a bunch of screws out of the back. So that's probably going to be my first order of business. Just ripping all those screws out. And then we'll kind of see if she falls apart at that point. So I'm still not entirely sure what we have to pull off, but I pulled off just the back screws and nothing really happened. Uh, so I did pull off the perimeter screws. This just tilts right up and out of the way. You unplug the LED right there. Pretty easy. Oh, the heatsink is loose. Oh, that came off easy. A big aluminum heatsink? Gross. It's not even that big. <laughs> this one doesn't feel as loose. So I'm gonna check for other screws and fasteners here. Let's see if maybe I missed something. Hopefully it's not glued. Hmm, I don't know. It is not glued. Just a lot of thermal pads. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta say, pretty, pretty well laid out cooler. I'm pretty impressed. Um, not impressed for cooling performance, obviously, but uh, overall, there have been worse units out there. And then there is our board. This is definitely a reference board. The VRM on this actually looks pretty solid. Good quality capacitors, missing a chip. I'm guessing that's gotta be for the Titan of this era. Uh, so I'm gonna grab something to wipe this old thermal paste off with. And then we will uh, start mounting up that Kraken. So here we have our chip, or I guess our die, uh, opened up and cleaned off just a little bit. Doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of schmoo on the outside, we're gonna put new paste on it anyway. And for paste, I always, for the last like 20 years, I've been using Arctic Silver 5. There have been a lot more pastes released in the last 20 years, but this stuff is still the bee's knees as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, time to uh, start unpacking the Kraken. So the Kraken comes with two sets of these metal brackets. Uh, the documentation states that the outer holes on the Kraken are for the NVIDIA pattern and the inner are for ATI. So through my excellent powers of deductive reasoning, I found that, oh, these are also marked A and these are marked N. Never mind, just read that. It's gonna say, I held these up and these were a little bit bigger. So uh, now what it wants you to do is fasten these to the board with the little spring screw that's in this. Those guys, through from the back side. And then we'll mount the Asetek AIO, which I've got conveniently right here. I was telling you guys about this thing. 120 mil, no frills, old stock. As you can see, it was made in 2017, but brand new. Standard Asetek pattern, no branding or anything, boring hoses, but 32 bucks. I mean, how could you say no? So we'll be mounting that up and installing it, certainly. But first things first is we got to put this bracket on there. You actually use the small screws and the washers for the brackets. Thumb screws are for holding down the AIO. So now that we've got that done, the next step is actually going to be mounting the fan into the bracket. So we'll do that. Next step is mounting the fan. So it's obviously going to be blowing at the VRM. And it's going to be mounted like that. So yeah, that seems like as good a place as any. Uh, next up, I'm actually looking at the instructions. Oh God, what's wrong with me? I think next up we mount the AIO. 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. So I've put my pea-sized blob of Arctic Silver on there, and I've got my AIO oriented like this. And yours might have a different sort of retention, but I actually have to kind of hold it together. So I'm going to center it over top here, and then I'm going to use those spring-loaded thumb screws that we saw earlier to fasten it once again to the bracket. Mm. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have your fan connector connected first. <laughs> Whoops. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, this doesn't come with a fan adapter. Uh, you have to buy one or you can run the pump and the fan off a separate uh, header on your motherboard or just run them flat out. But the most common and the best thing to do is to run the PWM controller from the actual GPU uh, with a splitter <laughs> to your pump and your 92 mil fan. So mine hasn't shown up yet. I kind of forgot about that. Uh, and now I'm probably gonna have to reapply thermal paste when it does show up, which also sucks. But I'm just gonna finish assembling it here, and for the meantime, maybe I'll just run them both full speed. Can't be any louder than the blower card, so uh, I'm gonna get this put together and shove it in the computer, see how it looks, see how it runs, and then we'll have to pull it back apart later and do that adapter thing. Blech. Well, it's in, it's on, and it posted, so that's good. Right now, our GPU temperature is at 24C, 23, the coldest I've ever seen it. Very nice. I, uh, I don't have my fan adapter yet, so I actually don't have any, uh, anything plugged into the VRM fan. So I really don't want to stress it too much until I've got that sorted, but it's in. That's how you water cool a GPU for like 62 bucks. Closer to 70, I guess, if you count that fan adapter. And then you will need a couple of uh, long screws to mount your AIO through your existing fan, probably. There are ways of doing it without it, but it's trickier. So may as well just do it the right way. Sure fits the case a lot better than the uh, nasty looking arrow. 